Hey everyone, Rod at East Coast Lumberjack. Um, I mentioned that I was going to do some videos on how to hang an axe. And that's exactly what we're going to do here uh, on this segment. Uh, I think I'll do a couple of, uh, on this. I'm going to do uh, hang a big one and I'll do a, a, a relatively small axe. Um, so being a professional lumberjack for, well I don't know, professional is the word or not, but I, I've chopped wood for about uh, 35 years. I started in 1985 and I've uh, been doing it ever since. I love it. It's just like an addiction and the axes that we swing are pretty amazing. So I just took a handle out. I just removed a handle out of one of these uh, competition axes. Uh, here it is here. This is the head. So as you can tell, it's, a, it's basically a five pound razor blade and it, it's wicked sharp. So I'll just peel a little bit of skin off my hand there, my fingers, to show you that it is razor sharp. These are phenomenal axes. And tuatai means the best in uh, New Zealand Aboriginal language. So I've been using tuatai axes for a long time. I think I got my first one in 1989, a flat grind. Um, and I ordered it through uh, Bailey's Mail Order Catalog back in the day. Um, they used to stock a lot of them. And Skip out in California was my contact. And I'd just call him up. And uh, he'd go through what he had for grinds and sizes. And I'd uh, pick the few that I wanted. Um, then when I started buying a lot. Because uh, I had good access for the guys that were competing here in the eastern part of the country. Um, I started dealing straight with Ed Fawcett down in New Zealand. In Masterton. So I bought a number of axes over the years. So what I want to do, these, these because they are so large and they are uh, basically a, a five pound razor blade, we always pin them. So the heads are usually pinned right here. Um, doesn't look like this one here is pinned a whole lot. So to remove a head like this, <clears throat> I, may, I may try to do this to see if the, the last one worked like clockwork. And of course I wasn't filming it, but a lot of times if you just tap the, and if you tap the head on, it'll give you a little bit of wiggle room. Now you'll see that this axe, there's no big shoulder here. Okay, there's, there's not a big shoulder on these axes. And the reason for that is because if you put a shoulder on your handle, it creates a weak point. So a couple of taps and it's gone down a little bit more. And usually what that does is that allows a little bit more wiggle room up at the top of the axe head. So a lot of times you put your, which I did on the last axe, it worked like clockwork. If you put your screwdriver in here, if it's loose at all, it'll pop that wedge out. And this one seems to be not going to cooperate. It just broke out of there. So that one's not going to pop out easily, so I'll put that aside. Let's try this last one. So this is another, this is a Tuatai axe as well. It has the pin in it, as you can see, the pin is in there. So I'm going to take my trusty hammer and I, you don't need much to poke it out of there. I have a little, uh, you can find where I stuck it. I did the other one like clockwork. Laid that down. So here it is. So I just got a little pin. And uh, I just set that on. So I'll put the axe on a vise or something solid. Hold it and then just take this here and I just tap that pin out. So let me it a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to take that and put it here where the pin is. It's a spring pin. A couple taps. And it slides. As you can see here it slides. Out. So I'll just grab that with my grab that with my pliers and twist a little bit and there's the pin. So that's a spring pin that holds these on because they, as I said they are five pound razor blades and I'm going to tap it a couple times like that at the end and see it's popped up a little bit here on the top. So now what I'll do is insert my screwdriver and try to pop that wedge out of there and typically if it's not too tight it'll pop right out i still see that it's moved a little bit so i'm hoping it's just going to pop out nice and easy i 
one's moved a bit. So we might be in business. And typically if you've used uh, linseed oil or something on your axis, on both ends, that'll help it wiggle loose a bit. Some of it came out. So sometimes you can actually get your pliers right on the end of it and pull it up. So. Still not quite there yet. Let's take a second here and the other thing about using a five pound razor blade is you're monkeying around with a razor blade. <laughs> and razor blades are pretty sharp. So usually when I'm monkeying around with this, if you're not real careful, you'll actually Give yourself a little slice, which I did. Not the end of the world. I've probably cut myself about uh, 500 times in my lifetime. So I'll just uh, put a little band-aid on that to hold her together. Keep them. The biggest thing is I don't want to get blood all over the handles. <laughs> I don't worry a whole lot about the. Uh, I don't worry a whole lot about the the cut itself. And actually, the last little while I've been actually stitching up. I've been stitching up my cuts myself because it takes so long to get into the hospital. And when you cut yourself, your body releases endorphins at the site. So about five to 10 minutes after you cut yourself, actually, it's pretty numb there. And uh, it, it works great for stitching. <laughs> so let me put that in the trash. And we'll come back here and I'll try to get a little bit more, uh, I'll try this one here. This is a little bit stubbier, pointy, uh, uh, tool and we may get a little bit more prying because all I have to do is pry that wedge a little bit to the side there you see it come up see that so we're almost where we need to be it's come up that far now and usually you can hook onto it and pull it out like that so if you've done a good job if you've done a good job uh, hanging it initially and treated your handle right, you usually see there's the other part of it. Okay, so that's great. It's going to be a good video. So once that's out, now we want to pound it the opposite way. There, one good poke came right clear. Okay, so that's <laughs> that was even better than the first one. Other than we had a, a little bit of a mishap. So there it is. Okay, so the handle's out. So I could re reuse that again. Um, and a smaller axe ahead. It's uh, the handle's in great shape, and there is it, it. It you can see it actually comes in quite a lot up here. This this is more of a shoulder than I would put in a competition axe. So we've got two heads now that we can hang. So I have right here. Yeah, which one's that? That's a chisel grind. I don't think that one cuts too badly. So I'm going to put in. So here's an East Coast Lumberjack handle. And for a competition axe, I actually take the back side of my rasp that's really rough. So this side here smooths it. This side here has got, you can see these raised um, shards of metal that are on this side. So they're pretty rough. And I rub those over this end to give you a really good grip on the palm swell end of your axe. So your hand's not going to slide off. And you can see my axes. I'm going to make these are fairly... This is really the key. As you, as you can see, if you watch my videos, you see that everything builds on the previous step. So if you do things right from the get-go, it makes this stage a whole lot nicer. So because this is very uniform, uh, the sides, the same amount to take off on each side. Um, I've got the kerf here right in the middle. So when it's like that, it makes it a whole lot easier for hanging. So then you can make sure you're taking the same amount off both sides. So I use these little, uh, they're aluminum with rubber on the inside, grommets. I put those on the jaws of my vise. Let me pick you up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So they, they go right here in the jaws of the vise. And now I can put my handle in this way without causing any vise marks or anything in my handle. Okay, so actually let's, I'll move it back a little bit more so you can see better. Okay, 
So this is what we're going to uh, work on right here. So I'll keep my axe head fairly close because I'll want to keep checking it for a shape. And you can see the shape of this eye. So it's, it's you know, obviously very wide here, but there's a gradual slope down towards the front of the handle. Okay, so it's a pretty big eye, gradual slope down to the front of the handle. So I'm going to take my spoke shave and I'm going to start doing that on this handle. So basically, if I can, pull, I'll show you what I'm going to do here. I know this makes a lot of racket, but I'm going to take on this axe right here, I'm going to start removing wood right here. Okay, because again, I want that to slope up to the back of the handle. So I want to take off uh, wood on both sides. So I'll count the number of strokes I do on each side and then I'll flip the handle over because you, in order to get this to hang straight, you need to take the same amount of wood off both sides. So, and you don't even really have to count strokes as much as you need to watch. And you see where I'm coming? I'm coming right back. So, so my shoulder is here, but I'm coming back here to take that off so it's nice and smooth right into the eye. And I know from doing this that I usually make my handles a little bit, my eyes a little bit big on my handles. So if I line this up this way, you can see. I don't know if it's pain a little bit, but when I hold it this way, you can see that the uh, where the eye is at on the handle. So my eye, my hand is a little bit wider than the eye right now, and it's a little bit thick right now. Okay, so I know I need to take it down. I need to take it down this way a little bit, and I need to change the angle. I need to make it teardrop shaped. So I'll keep showing you what I'm doing. So, and it comes down. It doesn't come to a point out here. It's rounded. So I want to make sure that I'm rounding it on my handle. I'm going to round it here a little bit. There we go. I'm also going to round the back because I know the back's rounded. I'm going to take a little bit off of here. And then a little bit off the what I call the cheek the cheek cheeky part right here. As the English would say, she's a cheeky cheeky Henry. So I wanna pull that off. So I wanna make that gradual slope from the bottom of the eye up to the top of the eye. Okay, so this is what I've done now. So that took just a couple of minutes, and you can see here. This side has got the gradual slope up here to the top of the eye. Now I'm going to flip it over and do this side. And you want to keep checking your, your eye on the handle because you don't want to take off too much. If you take off too much, you're right back to square one. you got to start with another handle. So this is peeling pretty good. Sometimes the grain's going the opposite way and you have to actually turn your spoke shape and go down. It all depends which way the grain's running. I'm still doing all right here right now. Okay, we're almost there. A little bit more out here. I'll round that eye out here in the end. Check. And now what I'll do is I'll check my head again to see, and it, oh, there we go. So see, I'm on already. Now, let me unhook you. I need to show you a few things. And again, I apologize for moving you around, but it's, a, it's the best way to see what's going on. So, when you're hanging your axe on your handle, <clears throat> the toe of the axe and the heel of the axe I need to be straight in line, one, two, with this part of your handle, right here. Okay, so on your palm swell, where it comes out, this, this, and this all must be in a straight line. So the easiest way I used to do that, I just put it right along the edge of my bench. Okay, and I make sure the heel and the toe, and that part of the handle, are all straight with the edge of my bench. The other thing you can do is you can actually use a straight edge. I'm just looking to see now, here's, I've got a broom. I'll use this here for now. It's not a great straight edge, but it'll give you the idea. Okay. 
So you can see it here from that swell in the handle to the heel to the toe. So what you can tell here when I'm looking at this, my toe needs to come in a little bit so my head has to move down. So I've just tipped it down a little bit because when that when all three of those line up that means you're hitting your wood right here in the center of your bit so the heel the toe and the bottom of the handle line up you hit right in the middle of the rounded bit all axes are typically well other than uh hewing axes have a, a, an arc on the edge to be most effective in penetrating the wood you want to hit right in the middle of that arc and how you do that is you line up the toe and the heel and the butt of your handle okay big big trick here from the east coast lumberjack um, to get a, to get a handle hung right now the other thing you want to do is you want to line up the, the blade of the axe the length of the blade with the length of the handle so what you'll do um, let me just pull it out here and show you so I'm going to set you down for two seconds okay so what we're going to do we're going to look down the edge of the axe Okay, so when we look down the edge of the axe and line it up, it wants to line up with the middle of the handle. So it wants to line up right like that. So I'm going to look down this, I'm going to look down the handle, and I'm off a little bit to one side. So what happens here, just sit down again. So what I'm doing, I'm looking down the edge of the axe and, and making sure when that's in line it lines up perfectly with the middle of the handle down there so this axe head is off to the right a little bit now if I just move it so there's a little bit of wiggle room so I moved it a bit and now it's straight in line because again I just set it on the end of the the end of the axe handle so now that I've got it lined up we're just going to tap it gently And the head, you can hear, tap, 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 tap. As it gets higher pitched, it's getting tight. And, of course, I can tell it's getting tight because it's starting to curl right here. It's starting to curl right here. But if we look at it, it's almost tight. There's, there's just a little bit of gap here. But it's nice and snug here on this side. Okay? So that's almost where we want to be. So now what I'm going to do is look down this again. Okay, so it's still off. It's just a smidgen to this side of the, to that side of the palm swell. So what I'm going to do, if it's, if it's sitting off, <clears throat> so the blade is sitting this way a little bit, so I want to turn the whole axe head like this. So I've got to take a little bit off the inside at the bottom, and a little bit off on the top on the opposite side. So that will actually allow it to tip this way. Okay? Because I want this bit perfectly in line with my handle. So usually what I'll do, and I, I used to do this automatically, but now as you get old, you start forgetting things. So I'll make a little mark over here on my handle. And that tells me that I need to take some wood off on that side. So from here on, all we're going to do is to hang this axe head. We're going to keep going through this process. Okay, so now I know... I'm curling a little bit here, I'm curling a bit in the back, and I'll see that as soon as I pull the handle out. So I'll take my drift, put it in the eye, drift the handle out, and I'm going to show you. Now everything you need to know is right here on the handle. Okay, so now when we look at this, we can see it's pinching here. Okay, you can see it's starting to dent the wood a little bit, so I know I need to take it off here. Now, I'm not going to take a lot off of right here because I know on the other side, this is where I want that head to tip a little bit. So I'm going to take it off here and I'm going to allow it to ride up on this side. That will pull it over. Okay, and I look at the back, it's dragging a little bit here because you can see the curl. And it's definitely dragging here into the side, so that's great. So now what I'll do, because I know, you can see here now, I've done both sides. That's what it looks like. So it's shaped almost identical to my eye. Okay, so there's the eye. So once your head's on there, you're going to allow the head, when it scrapes, to show you what you need to take off. So I'm going to put it back in. I'm going to start 
where I drew that line because I know it has to come off on that side to tip the blade in line with my palm swell. So, and again, I'm starting down the handle quite a bit, so it's gradually, the, the wood comes gradually into the eye. I'm going to take a little bit off the front of the eye. Remember where it was curling up a little bit on us. And then a little bit on the back where it's starting to curl up, so it's starting to get tight here. There. So I've taken... You remember the line? I'm going to show you that now. Okay. So that's where I, that's where I made the mark. It's gone. And it's nice and smooth right down here. There's a little bit... It gets a little bit wide right here, so I'll actually rasp that off here in a bit. But this is done. I, I took off that curl there, and I took off the curl in the back. Okay, so when I'm done, where it was scraping, you won't be able to see those scrape marks. Because I know I need those off of there in order for the handle to keep going on a little farther. So now I'll flop to the other side. Now on this side, I know I need to take a little bit more off on the top to tip that head. So, I'm going to leave the bottom half. I'm just going to take a little bit off the top. Because I want to tip that head. And actually, I want it to ride up on that little, that little cheek that we had. Because it will force that head over. I'll just smooth that out. And then what I'll start doing now... Move my broom out of here. <laughs> let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. I'll take this rasp and I'll smooth out my lines now. As it goes down onto the neck of the, of the handle. And you want to do this as well. Because you want a nice smooth transition from out, from out of your eye onto your handle. So it's nice and smooth the whole way along there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to... Any of these ripples that I've made from the spoke shade. I'm going to smooth them out. Because it, it doesn't take long at this stage until you get to where you want to be and just tap it the whole way on. I'll flip it over, do the same thing. Because remember I had a little bit of a, a hump out here. I'm going to flatten that out. Like that. Then you know, use your hand, your fingers, and feel it. Nice smooth transition there. And we're gonna go around where the axe head's eventually gonna sit. Smooth that out. There. And now we're gonna slide back on. Okay. So now our five pound razor blade's going back on again. Now I'm gonna line up the the toe and the heel and this part and see how straight they are. So I'm gonna use this here for you because it's you can see it really well. So it's gonna go on here. And we'll see how it's lining up with that. So you can see the same distance right there. So the, the heel's out just a smidgen. So that this head has to tip this way just a little bit. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm doing that. I just, I just twisted it that way. And I'll show you. It's going to be now sitting where I want it. So we go from here. Look at that now. Straight in line. That's what I want. So the, heat, the toe and the heel, and this all in a straight line. Now I'm going to sight down here. Okay, and it's sitting just off to the side a little bit. But again, all what we took off was down below this. So I'm going to I twisted my head just a little bit to line it up with that middle of the handle. Now I'm going to tap it again until I hear it go tick, 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 and it starts getting a little bit higher. So I know it's getting tight. So right now, okay, I've got about this much left so that's about two inches left to go on this is a four inch head okay so it's four inches this way i put it in there actually inch and a half is all i have left so now i'm going to sight down it okay and we're ju we're just a smidgen to the right hand side of, the, of that knob so we got to take a little bit i'm going to do the same thing again take a little bit more off and now you can see it's curling is curling up along here which is good and this side isn't so this side isn't curling yet so this side is curling so it tells me I need to take more off of this side so I can swing that blade to come a little bit more in line with the handle okay. actually when I look down that the whole head is sitting this way a little bit, so I want to tip it this way. So I'm going to take a 
bunch off of this side over here to tip that head and a little bit off the back down bottom to tip the head up straight. Let's check this way, see what it looks like. So it's sitting off. I can tell that it's sitting off. So same thing. I'm going to tap it out. Okay. A little bit of a bulge on the, the handle here, so I'm going to take that out. Right here. Okay. And now we want to tip it this the whole head this way. So I want a bit more off the back. I'm just gonna take this rasp because again. Um, we want it to go this way. Oh, sorry. I do want it to take more off this side here. Okay, now I want to take a little bit more off the opposite side. Over here. And that's going to be off the front side because I want to tip the whole head that way a bit. Okay. Smooth it out again, just in case it goes on the whole way this time. So this is going, I'm doing it quite quickly because we're now at about 27 minutes. I don't want you to spend a whole lot of time just watching me back and forth. But it, it, that's about how long it takes. It's usually a, it's usually at least a 30 minute job to do this, to do it right. Sometimes it's a little bit longer. I'm going to smooth out the handle here where it's, it's going to rest. There we go. So we're going to take the move. Take the drift out, set the head on again, and so it's sitting, it's sitting better. This way here, heel toe, that's all aligned. So I'm going to tap it on a little bit more. So we're just an inch away now. Just an inch away. Look down the handle. And we're perfect. We're perfectly in line with that knob now. Okay. So it's curling a little bit more. So I know I have to take a little bit more off to take tap it on. I've got about an inch left in here. You can see the eye getting close here now. So I've got about an inch to go and I've got a little bit of curl so now I'm going to let the, now that everything's lining up, beautiful. So I'm going to let the head tell me what needs to happen from here on. So I'm just going to tap it out wherever it's dragging. Because it's all lined up now, all I need to do is let the head tell me. So it says there's a little curl here. It says that you got to take some off of there, Rod. There's a little bit here. You got to take some off of there. A little bit of curl on the front, you can see. And it's pinching here just a bit. So all I'm going to do is put it back in the vise and clean up those few spots. Now that I'm getting down there a little bit. Okay, there's a... So always check the handle too. So when I when I looked at that last one, I can see that it's uh, 
it's a little cheeky over here so I took I took some off of that okay so I'm going to take a little bit more off that cheeky part of the handle so right now same thing back to the spoke shave so that'll go on there then of course we know the back getting a little tight so we're gonna take a little bit off of there a little bit on the front where we know it's dragging I'm gonna take my Nicholson file here and I'm gonna smooth it out so right up nice and smooth Flip it over and do the other side so you can see this side here. It's nice and clean. Oh, sorry. Yep. I left a little bit at the top because I know I'm not worried about it dragging up here. But the bottom part of it you can see is all nice and clean. I've cleaned that all up. So now this side, it's got a little bit of drag marks. So I'm going to clean it up because I know that that's going to drag. Same thing here, I'm going to take my rasp, or my, sorry, my file, Nicholson file, and smooth it out the whole way down there, because we're not far, with only an inch to go, it might tap the whole way on this time. So it goes on three quarters of the way here now, very smooth and easy. So I'm going to tap it again. And you're tightening up. So we've got about a half an inch to go. There's curl here now. See that curl? You never want to leave that. Okay? That curl, like that, of course, that you've started a split in the wood. And if you leave that curl and tap it on the rest of the way and just clean the curl off, you've, you, you, you've started a split in your handle. <clears throat> so check this out again. It's perfectly in line with the handle. See that? Right straight in line. Beautiful. So all we need to do now is just keep, I'm just going to keep doing that back and forth until it's done. So... You know it's going to come out fairly slick. So again, this is a, this is a four pound or a five pound axe. You look at it again. You can see where it's dragging again on this side. It's dragging here. It's pinching a little bit here. And this is the curl that I told you about that we want to take off of there. Okay. Ah, oh, she's raining. I can hear it raining outside. So same thing again. Tightening up in the vise here. I'm just going to take, I'm going to clean that curl right off of there so it's a nice smooth transition. Okay, I'm going to take my file, smooth it out. There we go. When you look at it now, you saw the marks that were on it before, so just just takes a little bit. We've cleaned that off so it can slide right up on there. And then the same thing on this side. You can see that there's a dent right along here. We're going to take that out and clean up that back a little bit. Because that, that's what's holding it from sliding on the rest of the way. So we're just going to take that off. Just, just gentle stuff. Now you don't want to take too much off at this point. Because you may slide right past where you want it to rest. So what we're gonna, what we want, and we want it to, to actually fetch up down there. In a, in a half an inch, we want it to fetch up because that means we're going to be at the top of our eye. Now, if you want a proud hang, you may want it to fetch up three quarters of an inch down there so that it actually slides on and you have that top of your handle sticking out through so you have a proud hang. Okay. Now, something else I'll do at this stage because I know I've only got a half an inch to go. So I'll just use my fingers, make sure it's nice and smooth here. Then I'll take my sandpaper and sand right at the neck. 
where it's going to rest. So it's nice and smooth because you can't sand that once the head's on. The head's too tight. So we're just going to smooth it out nice with the sandpaper all the way around. Because we are getting close. There we go. Take the drift out. And so now see it slides almost the whole way on. And that's what you want. You want it to go, that's two thirds of the way on. Or actually three quarters of the way on right now. And we'll line it up again. It's exactly where we want it. So now we're going to tap it again. And now it's starting to fetch up. And there's our, there's our wood almost perfectly with the eye. So you can see now there's a little bit of curl there again. Remember what I told you, don't leave that curl there. So we're, we're just about there. This will be the last time we take it off and on. Okay, so. Right at the top of the, the eye here, so it's started now. Once you get it started, you're all set. You can tell by the sound when it lets go. Slides out. So the last little bit. All right, a little bit of curl here. A little bit of pinch here. And we look down the handle. It's not bad. I might smooth that out just a little bit down here so it's, it's really smooth going in there. So that caused a couple little uh, bumps in the handle because, of course, I kept rasping down farther and farther, uh, not rasping, but spoke shaving down farther and farther. So we'll flop it over both sides, smooth that down. So it's nice and smooth the whole way up to the, yeah, nice. So it's nice and smooth the whole way out to the end. So all you do now is finish these last few little marks so that it'll rest nice and smoothly. So I'm just gonna use my file on this side because it's just pinching on this side. Right, we just need a quarter of an inch. So wherever the black marks are, or were, taking them out, and I'm going to smooth it right down here because again, this is the last, the last time it's going on. It's going to sit here from now on. So I want it nice and smooth the whole way down. Out of the eye, nice and smoothly onto the handle. Okay, now it's pinching on this side. Remember, it's curling here. So I know if it's curling, I can take a little bit more wood off because it's, if it's tight enough, it's not just pinching, it's curling. That means I've got a little bit extra wood there. Okay, now it's just pinching on that side. So, oh, sorry, on the back end. So now I'm going to take my file and smooth it all out again because, again, it's the last time. It's the last time it's going on. It's going to rest here forever. As long as our handle lasts. So we smooth that out. Smoothed out the back. And then we're going to sandpaper it again. Okay, so this is how the East Coast Lumberjack does it. This is a big five pound razor blade to a tie axe. And if it works for this, it'll work for all your handles. So this is a proper way to hang an axe. At least, <laughs> at least the proper way in my books. Okay, so it's nice and smooth the whole way. So this, this is it. This is for all the marbles. Again, it slides on about three quarters of an inch left to go. And we're just going to tap it on the rest of the way. You can hear it snug right up. There. Okay, a little bit sticking out through the top. Perfect. Okay, that's a, that's a beautiful feeling handle. Okay, nice the whole way. So now what I'll do, I'll take my wedge. So I make all my wedges on the bandsaw. The other thing I'll do now, and you should be able to see this, I'll set that the the sharp point here, the heel, on a little piece of wood on the bench. Then I'm going to take my screwdriver, my flat screwdriver, and see that it's open halfway down, but it's closed up where we've been tapping it out with the drift. So I just got to tap that in and wiggle it back and forth. I'm going to open up this kerf again. Is all I'm doing. And the screwdriver will do that for you. 
Okay, so I'm opening up the kerf so that my wedge will fit in there smoothly. The other thing I'll do is I'll check out. Now, my, my kerf has been cut almost halfway down. And you can see I've got a little bit of slack here. I've got about two mils on this side and a mil to back on this side. So th I have three mils to take up at the top. And of course I want my wedge down in there about an inch and a half. So I'm going to take, see how thin the wedges are? So what you want to do is take a wedge. There we go. That's what I want right now. Because see that's about uh, two inches long. It's nice and narrow but I've got about three mil at the top. So I know if I put that in there, by the time that seats, it's going to be down there as far as I want it to go to fill up the gap down in the middle of the hand of the eye. And it's going to give me my three mil at the top to tighten it up at the top. So I just set my wedge in like this and just gently at first. Okay. And she's starting to fetch up. So I'm just going to pound that along. That front part's busted off already. I'm going to beat that in there as far as I can. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Okay, I pounded that in there as far as I can get it. So now I'm just going to take the bandsaw and cut that off nice and smooth. Voila. Nice and smooth across there. So now what you can do is take your file or your wood rasp and just clean up around the top of it and I usually bevel it in on the top. Smooth it out around the top. There. So check that out. Okay. Nice and full the whole way around. Shaped exactly like the eye is the last thing I'll do is take my drill and I usually use a drill that's a little bit smaller than my than my spring pin go halfway through one side and then meet it on the opposite side now, that's a big trick from the East Coast Lumberjack, because if you try to go the whole way through, the odds of you hitting the hole on the other side is next to nil. That's <laughs> I've been doing this for years, and I usually miss it. Now, if you make your hole a little bit smaller, sometimes what happens if you, if you use a drill bit the same size as your spring pin, your spring pin stays loose. So I always use a drill bit a little bit smaller. Uh, it's usually uh, half a mil smaller. So the pin goes in so far, and then it stops. And now it's fetching up on the wood, so I'm going to tap it in the rest of the way using the handle now. That's hit. It's off just a bit. And that other hole, there we go. So there it is now on that side of the hole. And this side, it's nice and flush. So it's wedged beautifully. It's pinned. It's straight in line with the, uh, with the middle of the knob. We have ourselves... A well hung two tie axe ready for the Eastern qualifier from that bud on Saturday. So, lots of tips from the East Coast Lumberjack on how to hang an axe. And I'll show you the next time on a little bit smaller beast. East Coast Lumberjack signing off. See you, gang.